Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I got another little computer here in the office and I wanna see if I can take the big regular standard uh, tower, not like the huge processing computer, but my regular out of the box standard tower, which is the Lenovo. And uh, I wanna see if I can replace that with a good micro tower that still has with it the power to run this, which should be a little bit lower power. It should be uh, definitely a lot smaller in space and things like that. So um, now I, this is actually the second attempt I tried to get something. I wanted to use, uh, I think it's called Ace PC, um, but they are garbage. Avoid the Ace PC. I pulled the thing out of the box. It felt like cheap garbage and the power button was broken. Brand new device just opened, power button was broken. So I sent it back, I actually paid just a few more dollars and I got this guy here, which is a refurbished computer. So nice blank discreet box. I promise there's nothing nasty in my discreet box. But uh, what I went with here is a Dell Optiplex and this is a refurbished computer. And I like buying refurbished because it's like buying a used car. It's fine, I've never had a problem with refurbed computers. In fact, my one web design computers, I bought it refurbished and it's over 10 years old. And it's actually, I think it's older than that at this point. Um, but I just got this guy from Amazon. I paid $260 for it. So we'll see how well this guy works. Now being a refurbed and uh, it has of course its own box and stuff. So um, we have, just opening it up here, we have a power cable. Now, the one thing I don't like about the Dells, they actually use a little bit different power cable than has become standard in the industry. So it is a little bit different. So um, if I wanted to do something else a little bit more module with it, um, I'm gonna have to make adjustments for that, but we'll talk about that another time. Here is the actual computer itself. So this is the size we're looking at. This one is a little bit bigger than that Ace PC, but uh, hey, it's Dell. It actually feels solid. I haven't even opened it up yet, but it kind of feels solid. We have here a um, DisplayPort adapter. They've given us a lot of little, little goodies with this guy. So this guy here will go into your DisplayPort adapter over to a VGA. I don't think I specifically have a need for such a cable, but uh, I'll throw it in my pile of stuff. Now these computers from Amazon, they do have, I think they have either a 60 or, I think it's about a 60 day, um, a 60 day return window. So we're gonna go ahead and test it. This guy has the specs on the back, lists this guy as being a Dell 7040 MDT i5 6500T eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD. Now it says Wi-Fi, but these actually don't have Wi-Fi on them. So they shipped you, I believe a Wi-Fi uh, card. So we'll go ahead and look at that. Um, it has ew, Windows 10 Pro and a one year warranty. Okay. And so that's actually pretty good. So um, we will of course test it, make sure Windows works and then we'll wipe it out and put a real Linux distribution on it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and open this guy up, see what it looks like. We have a nice little high there from Amazon. And looks like this is um, interesting. So it does, uh, if you, uh, we want you to be delighted with your purchase, not completely satisfied, let us know and you'll get a replacement or refund within 90 days of receipt. So we have 90 days for this guy. And again, refurbished. So we're saving quite a bit of money and we are also going to be um, uh, keeping stuff out of landfills. And hey, here's information about your product key. I'm not sure if there's actually an active product key on this or not, having a clue, don't really care. Um, so here is the device itself. There is a little card to call if it's damaged or whatever else. And here's what we have. This feels way, way better than that Ace PC did. Those Ace PCs are really that bad. So voltage 19.5, amperage 3.34, uh, which is about the same voltage that you find on a laptop. So this guy here is definitely more power efficient. There's a one little spin screw here. I'm not sure I can open this with my hands or not. Oh, 
maybe I can. Yes, I can indeed. So there's a little pin screw back here and then that should allow the case to just open up. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, as far as what Linux distribution we are putting on this guy, um, I am not 100% sure. So this is supposed to replace my Arch computer, but I might actually do something different with it because reasons. So we'll see. All right, that guy is off. Does that allow this to slide out now? I don't know. It should. Hmm. Oh, wait, 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 we got, I got some sliding. Woohoo, there it goes. Okay, it slides this way. All right. So it slides this way. This is what we have inside. So here's what your inside looks like. So it does look like we can replace this SSD there with something else if we don't. But uh, I'll go ahead and keep it as the uh, SSD there. It does it just slides in and out. So this is a KingFast SSD. I'm not sure. You guys tell me, is that KingFast something that's going to be reliable or is that something I should definitely replace? So otherwise in here, we do have a M2 slot as well. So if I had an M2, I could use the M2 instead of the SSD. Um, and there's actually, oh wow, there's actually two M2 slots. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get this guy focused on the computer and I'll point these guys out here. Okay, there's actually two M2 slots. Here's a short M2 slot. This label is M2 here. There's a long M2 on this side as well. So we have a variable. So I can actually have multiple M2s in here. Here's the SSD. So this guy can hold a lot of hard drives. I wonder if I can run, um, if I can run a few of them in there all at once. All right, so there's what we have there. We have uh, this guy just lifts up. So that's the, your processor and there is uh, two, I don't know if I can, there's your processor fan and then under there on the top side up there, right under Roger the alien, there's actually a slot for two RAM chips and they put a single eight gigabyte RAM chip in here. And I think this should be, let's see, it's PC4 2133P. So, and that is SK. Is SK Hynix, it looks like? I don't know. Again, you'll have to tell me. I have not been in the um, computer building for a while. But what's really cool about this guy here is how modular this is. So I bet I could buy a new one of these fans if I needed to, if it dies out. There's, um, there's a battery down there, which kind of the battery down there looks a little old, but uh, we'll kind of deal with that. If, uh, if it's a problem, that's easy enough to replace. So let's go ahead and set everything back here on top of this. I do have to put it on right, just like that. Very nice. No tools to disassemble it. That's good. Okay, so we'll slide this guy back on. It goes the other way. So for two hundred and sixty dollars, I think I paid for this guy. It is looking so far pretty good. There is still more in the box over here. So let's go ahead and put our screw cap back in and then we'll kind of walk through all of our ports here. All right, so on the back we have an ethernet port, which is, uh, I believe it should be a gigabit ethernet port if I'm remembering correctly. So we have an ethernet port here. We have four USB C's. We have a display port adapter and a full size HDMI and we have power. And then on the front of the tower, we have two more USB threes and we have, it looks like an, um, it looks like that's going to be an, probably an input or maybe it's a speaker out. I'm not remembering my uh, color symbols. So it's either going to be a, a, a line input, which I think is what it is. And then we have a headphone microphone combination. And hey, we have the power button. Actually feels like it's going to work. So that's good. So hopefully that computer will be good. There's something else in the box. Um, hilariously, this 
was somebody gave this guy like a one or two star review because they said it doesn't come with a keyboard. And I was very excited to know it doesn't come with a keyboard because if there's anything else in here I don't need in my office, it's another keyboard. But I have a keyboard. So this guy here is a wired keyboard, a wired mouse, a USB Wi-Fi adapter, and a three-pronged cord. I have no earthly idea why we have a three-pronged cord because they gave us another three-pronged cord over here. So these guys here, let's see. We just have a standard wired mouse and a standard mechanical keyboard, which I don't need. If anybody needs a wireless mouse or a, or a wired mouse and a wired mechanical keyboard uh, and you're in the United States, let me know. I'll send it out. I am keeping this though. Uh, that will be a USB Wi-Fi adapter. Always good to keep a couple of those laying around in case I happen to need one. And again, I got a three-prong cord here. If you need one, let me know. Um, I think I have a lot of them. And uh, I don't know. So anyway, yeah, if anybody needs a mechanical keyboard, let me know. I certainly don't. But anyway, that is all we have inside the box. So what we're going to do is uh, anytime you get a, a computer, particularly refurbish one like this, and uh, this guy here, there we are, kind of sits like this. Anytime you get a refurbished computer like this, you do want to plug it in. So even though it's uh, Windows 10, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. We're going to make sure everything works. I'm going to test out all the USB ports, test out the Ethernet ports, things like that. And then uh, with all that, once I have confirmed it all works, then we're going to go ahead and wipe it out and put a Linux distribution on it. I'm going to use it for about a week or two, and then I'm going to come back and tell you guys what I think of this device. And find out is this guy capable of replacing the big tower that I have. So with that guys, uh, we'll jump on over to, um, uh, I won't show you the boring windows part. I'll just jump on over next. And assuming you see this video, I'll show you whatever Linux distribution I have placed on this device. So with that we'll jump on over to the computer. So here we are over on the desktop of the computer, and uh, I've of course tested everything with Windows 10, making sure everything works. Anytime you're buying particularly a computer at all, particularly a used one, you do want to boot into the operating system and whatever means they give it to you, test everything out just to make sure everything works. So I went ahead and did that, and uh, I just went ahead and put Antergos back on here, excuse me, uh, Endeavor OS back on here. The same exact operating system, in fact, in the exact same configuration as was on the old computer that this system is replacing. So what I did is I just went, on, went online, grabbed the latest version of Endeavor OS, installed it, and then I just popped in a thumb drive. I, maybe I did it through the network. However I did it, I simply took the entire contents of the home folder on the old system and just dropped it over here and everything is exactly the same. In fact, if I boot the two computers up side by side, you couldn't tell which one's which unless you go in and have a look at the system information. So let's just go ahead and have a look at um, system info here. So if we have a look at our system info, it pulls it up. We can see we're on Arch Linux. We're on Cinnamon version 5.02, Linux kernel 5.12. The processor here, this is the i5-6500T at uh, 2.5. I think that the other one does peak a little bit higher, um, but it does have less RAM. And so this guy here has eight gigs of RAM. This has a um, uh, just Intel integrated um, graphics. So we actually have, uh, I'm wondering if this has more a more dedicated graphics in there. I didn't dig into any of that, but I do have more available system RAM on this than I did on the old Lenovo. The Lenovo was an A8 5500 which has the integrated graphics, six gigs of RAM, but five of it is all that reports here is five because one of it goes for the memory as well. So overall, as I said, you can't tell the difference. I have used this computer for an entire week with absolutely the same way I have used the old one. It is a 100% replacement with no other issues at all reported. So we're able to do uh, video calls. I'm able to do, uh, you know, this basic screen recording, screen capping here. I didn't plug the camera in. Maybe I should try that out. 
Um, I have the uh, speaker out going to my my main office speakers, which is standard. I literally am just swapping everything for the old system. You can see it's not overwhelmingly um, injured, even though we are recording at um, uh, recording at 1080p. You can see here's your um, available memory, 1.5 gig out of 8.2 is available. So there we have it. So this system here is, of course, my media PC. This is the one I use Brave for YouTube. I have Thunderbird Evolution to check all my email accounts, Discord, Element, and uh, Cody is what I use to uh, watch videos and other movies and such from my internal network. And then everything else that I do on this, uh, I've done a little bit of everything so far. We've done some key pass management. Uh, I'm not sure I've actually booted up Bible Time or not. I usually don't use this computer for that. It's just here in case I need it. I have done some GIMP manipulations. I have used LibreOffice. I have used Chromium. I have used Vivaldi. I have not used Zoom yet on this system. I'm not anticipating any issues. So most of everything else in here, though, I, I have actually used. Uh, I've not used Handbrake. I'm not sure actually why I installed Handbrake on this because there's no CD-ROM. <laughs> I might get an external one because I do actually occasionally use a CD-ROM. And so I'll either just use the one on the other system here. I actually have two other computers with them or I'll just buy an external one. I haven't completely decided. As far as the power consumption differences, this computer here peaks out at 100 watts, whereas the other one generally peaked out closer to um, uh, closer to about two or 300 watts. And so it is a significant power savement as well. I did not plug in my power meters to measure the actual change in consumption, but just based on the, the pull draw of the AC adapters and stuff, it is significantly lower. So there you have it. This is the, um, the Dell Optiplex micro tower. They are seven inch, seven inch by one and a half inch. And it is a 100% replacement for the old Lenovo tower that I actually had in the office utilizing as this. So now I'm able to save a lot more space, go down to a smaller, smaller footprint and also a smaller footprint on power usage. I would highly recommend this. And the refurbished one on Amazon was $260 and that included all of our shipping and everything. So, and it came in, in less than a week's time. So if you are looking for a really good computer to play around on Linux, I'm easily going to be able to do my, my web design work. I mean, if the Raspberry Pi can do it, this absolutely can do it. And uh, it's actually a little bit better spec than the current uh, Windows-based system I have, although I haven't used that since the Raspberry Pi has been online for a month. And uh, I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of video editing on it, although who knows, maybe I should try a little bit of it. So with that, that is exactly where we are. It is a perfect replacement, very inexpensive, under $300. And I use this for all forms of media and communication work. So uh, there we have it. Have a look at that. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.